figure out what routine, what critical tasks, what helpful habits put you in that sweet spot in the sky, that altitude where you are the most productive and do your best to stay in it. Welcome to the Spinoso Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Spinoso. My experience and expertise is in scaling all types of medical businesses to seven, eight, and nine figures. And I'm sharing my journey to having multiple eight-figure companies and someday, hopefully, enjoying a nine-figure exit. This isn't a podcast telling you you should do this. I'm just telling you how I did this, and I hope that helps you. I want to help you build your business, take ownership of your life, and become a better leader at home and at work. And guys, I'd love to connect with you, especially if you're a medical entrepreneur. I have free courses available to help you scale your medical business. Check those out at dralexspinoso.com slash courses. That is D-R-A-L-E-X-S-P-I-N-O-S-O dot com slash courses. I also invite you to connect with me on Instagram at Dr. Alex Spinoso, LinkedIn at the same and every other platform, YouTube, et cetera, I am always Dr. Alex Spinoso. Thanks for listening. So if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know that I like stories. I like movies like Braveheart and Gladiator. I like comics like Superman and Batman. Hell, I even love Broadway shows like The West Side Story and Phantom of the Opera. I recently recorded another short talk where I talk about the power of telling stories. If you have listened to me for any length of time, you also know that I was founding member of a group of entrepreneurs known as the Arte Syndicate. The concept of that group was very greatly influenced by the founder's interest in ancient Greek and Roman culture. In fact, Arete was the cardinal virtue of Greek and Roman culture. Arete means excellence. So I was thinking again about how formative it was for me to be a part of the Arte Syndicate. And that got me diving into some of the ancient Greek and Roman myths again. And all I can say is, they are fucking gold mines of lessons. Killer lessons for entrepreneurs. Really killer lessons for anyone who want to overachieve at anything. So I thought I'd do a couple short talks on the Greek and Roman myths. I'll call them Ancient myths for overachievers. I'll probably do two to four of them in the next couple months. I'm not sure. We'll see how this goes. But the one I want to start with is the myth of Icarus, or more specifically, the myth of Daedalus and Icarus. It's a good one. And it is very applicable to anyone who wants to pursue success in business or life. So here's how it goes. A long time ago in the land of Crete, there lived a brilliant inventor named Daedalus. He was famous for his incredible skills in crafting and building. But even though he was so talented, he found himself trapped in a tough situation. Daedalus had built a maze called the Labyrinth for King Minos of Crete to keep the monstrous Minotaur inside. But after the Labyrinth was finished, the king, not wanting Daedalus to share his secrets with anyone, locked him and his son Icarus away on the island. Man, that sucks balls, right? Well, my man Daedalus, being the clever man he was, refused to give up. He realized that escaping by land or sea was impossible, so he came up with the daring plan to escape through the air. He decided to make wings for himself and his son using feathers and wax. After many days of hard work, he finished creating the wings. They were amazing. They allowed a person to fly like a bird. So on the day of the escape, Daedalus carefully fastened the wings onto Icarus's back and then put on his own. But before they took off, Daedalus gave Icarus a serious warning. A very simple, serious warning. My son, he said, you must be careful. Don't fly too low or the damp air from the sea will make your wings heavy. But don't fly too high either, because the heat from the sun will melt the wax that holds your wings together. Stay in the middle, follow me closely, and we will safely reach the mainland. Icarus nodded. He was excited. 
but he did not fully understand the danger. And the truth is, he was a dumbass and really wasn't listening to his dad. So guess what happened? Together, they jumped from the edge of a cliff, their wings catching the wind, lifting them into the sky. At first, everything went perfectly. They soared above the sea, leaving the island behind. But as they flew, Icarus began to feel more confident and thrilled by the experience of flying. Dude got too caught up in the adrenaline of the moment. The wind in his hair and the sight of the world below filled him with excitement. And he started to climb higher and higher and higher, forgetting his father's warnings. The sun looked so bright and inviting, and Icarus felt unstoppable. You see where this is going, don't you? What did his dad warn him about? The sun's heat began to melt the wax holding Icarus's wings together. Feathers started to fall off, and before Icarus knew it, his wings had completely fallen apart. And the kid started panicking. He tried to keep flying, but it was already too late. Without his wings, Icarus plummeted down towards the sea. Icarus screamed as he fell, begging his father for help, but there was nothing Daedalus could do. Helplessly, Daedalus watched as his son hit the water and disappeared beneath the waves. Splash! The sea swallowed up Icarus. Well, fuck, Daedalus said. No, just kidding, just kidding about that. Look, actually, Daedalus was heartbroken. He continued flying, but now his heart was heavy with grief. He eventually reached the mainland, but he didn't enjoy his freedom. All he can think about was that he lost his son. Throughout history, the meaning of that story has been interpreted as a warning against ignoring wisdom, getting caught up in the moment, and giving yourself over to extremes. Remember, Daedalus warned his son, don't fly too low to the sea, don't fly too high to the sun. He told him, fly in the middle. Now, this is not a story to communicate mediocrity. It's not saying don't work extremely hard, and it's not saying don't have big, audacious dreams for your life that you fly towards. The principle that has been taken from the story is something called the golden mean. This was a concept the Greeks had. And the golden mean says, don't get caught in your mountaintop experiences. Also, don't let yourself get stuck wallowing in the low regions of life, discouragement, depression, beating yourself up. Instead, live in that center of the sky where you're going to be able to fly. Consistently come back to that space where you are going to be most productive. And what is that space? For me, it's taking everything one day at a time. It's working with the daily routine that I've discovered gets the most out of me and my effort. It's executing the important critical tasks. It's consistently exercising the habits that I have found produce good results. Does that mean I won't allow myself to celebrate wins? No, but there's a limit. If I'm still riding high on wins a week or two after they happen, I'm flying too close to the sun. I've gotten too caught up in the moment. And if I'm still mourning a loss or still pissed or still discouraged and depressed, that something didn't go my way a week or two after it happened, I need to take a good look in the mirror and say, what the hell's wrong with you? Get over yourself. Check your ego at the door and get back to work. I am flying too low to the sea. I mean, let me ask you this. Do you want to be one of those one-hit wonder entrepreneurs who have a massive successful six months or nine months or a year and then they crash and burn? Do you want to be someone who is doing well and then gives up the first time they get really punched in the mouth? I don't. Neither do you. So remember the golden mean. Don't fly too high toward the sun. Don't fly too low to the sea. Figure out what routine, what critical tasks, what helpful habits 
put you in that sweet spot in the sky, that spot where you are the most stable and consistent, that altitude where you are the most productive, and do your best to stay in it. It's not the ups and the downs that define our lives. It's the work we do in the middle, consistently flying, consistently trying. Take seriously the words of Alexander the Great, the Greek leader who conquered Persia, founded cities, unified Greece, and spread the Greek culture around the world. He said, there is nothing impossible to him who will try. So remember, there is nothing impossible to him who will try.